you know, you can hear that the motion of that pulse wave, the up part of the pulse wave diminishing is kind of pleasing. Listen. That effect often was put on single oscillator monosynths to give them the, the sound of oscillators beating against each other because there is a slight tuning variation that happens. Which is why so many synthesizer builders put in pulse width modulation where the voltage from the low frequency oscillator is applied to the pulse width and allows the LFO to vary the pulse width. So you don't have to turn the knob, the LFO is turning the knob for you. Here we have pulse width modulation, and that's what this does. Right now the LFO setting is somewhat low, so I'll turn it up. And all that's happening is that that pulse width is being changed, made small, and then back big again by the voltage from the LFO. And even though this was always an apology about a lack of a second oscillator, in 1979, Yamaha got the idea of, well, you know, it just sounds cool on its own. Let's put two oscillators with pulse width modulation and see what happens. <laughs> By setting different pulse widths, one can get different types of pulse width modulation. And by setting pulse width modulation differences in the two oscillators, you get a really interesting chorusing sound. So with control voltage, we are able to create that same modulation. Unfortunately, because the second oscillator is the only one, only one with a sine wave output and the only one with pulse width modulation capability, we have to find something vaguely sine wave shaped elsewhere. I've turned oscillator three to a low frequency oscillator. I'm taking its square wave output, putting it into a lag processor which slows down voltage changes and rounds them off. And I'm basically creating a vaguely sine wave shaped wave by putting the square wave through the lag processor, which is rounding it off, taking that output and putting it into the pulse width modulation input on voltage controlled oscillator number two. So it's going to modulate this pulse width. It's not a perfect sine wave, you can hear, but it uh, does the trick. And also by varying the pulse width, it affects what the pulse width modulation is doing. And that point where we hear the sound going away, that's nothing to be alarmed about. It's just that we've modulated the pulse width to the point where it's at 100%, which means there is no sound. So when you get to that point, if you don't want that uh, gap, you have to adjust the pulse width or the pulse width modulation so that that gap doesn't exist, which we can do. And that is pulse width modulation.